Good afternoon. I'm going to have your attention, please. I'd like to welcome you to the 2018 annual meeting. I'm Bob Lewis, Executive Director of iPrime. And with me at the front table are Professor Satish Kumar, the Faculty Director of iPrime, and also Chris McCosco, Director Emeritus of iPrime. Right, so thank you. So welcoming and uh, thanking all of our member companies. And one of the things you'll probably see, and maybe even at this lunch, is the connections that happen between companies up and down the supply chain. And uh, we really value that as part of, of iPrime. And even iPrime, the open nature of iPrime allows even competitors to collaborate at the level of basic science, fundamental science. So we also welcome a number of new members, five new members this year. And uh, if we can just show, have a show of hands of the new members, each of them have a, uh, a green uh, ribbon on their tag, so make sure to welcome them as well. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not canned applause, it's live applause. Anyway, so we're also welcoming a number of guests here, uh, and they are looking and evaluating iPrime, and they have a, uh, I forgot now, a, a blue, uh, I'm sorry, a green tag. And so please welcome them as well, and uh, tell them why they should join iPrime. We also welcome a number of industrial fellows, and these are employees of our member companies who come in residence with us for some period of time and work for a pro on a project of open, like the rest of iPrime, of open nature. If your company would like to send a fellow or you'd like to learn more about the program, please see me after this. Here are the seven research programs that we have in iPrime, and you can see it's quite a range of technology and science. I bolded the flexible electronics and voltaics because Russ Holmes will be our speaker today. Uh, and he is the program leader for the FEP program. This is our website. And you can, I don't have a pointer here, but down where it says iPrime Overview is a much more involved uh, uh, slideshow. So this year I'm going to keep my comments uh, quite, quite brief compared to past years. So we have time to thank and honor the long, the long service of Chris McCosco to iPrime. So Chris was the founding director of iPrime beginning in 1999. I had the pleasure to start working with him in 2004, and during that time we've become extremely close friends, almost sometimes completing each other's sentences at times. And thankfully, Chris is not going off into the sunset. He will remember, he will remain as a, um, a member of the executive committee as director at Emeritus, and that guidance will be invaluable to the entire group. So come on up, Chris, we have something for you. Well, on behalf of the um, iPrime Executive Committee and really all the iPrime faculty, we have a nice card for Chris along with a gift. This was actually handmade by, by Bob's wife, and we have a quote I'd like to read uh, for you from this. It says, we simply want you to know that your leadership has been an invaluable contribution to our shared effort. Your commitment over the years has meant more than we can say. We wish you all the best. And we have in here a, a gift certificate so you can take Kathleen to a nice dinner to thank her for her efforts as well. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. That was great. Come on, you guys, sit down. It's, uh, I want to hear Russ's talk. Uh, but uh, it's just great, I tell you. This room with everybody here, all of my faculty colleagues, and uh, the wonderful industrial um, input that we get through iPrime is just uh, exciting to see. And I uh, look forward to coming back uh, next year as well. So Pat Brand from ExxonMobil. And Kurt Kopey would like to make a few quick comments about Chris. Pat Brandt. Thanks. 
<clears throat> well, first of all, I think it's worth saying that we have a better present for you than the gift card. <laughs> it's something that uh, not too many people appreciate so much, a 50-pound bag of resin. <clears throat> Let's see, you wanted to uh, achieve something or other, so 50 pounds of that will be coming your way as part of the retirement package or emeritus package. I, I just wanted to say a little more about your style of leadership. Um, your style of leadership is, uh, is that of the servant uh, leader. And if you look that up, that's a, a tough one to, to carry out. And it's one that I very much appreciate. It's one that I think everybody here benefits from. I think that um, if, you, if you add up all the years of, of servant leadership that you've engaged in, uh, you look back on your, your career, the impacts of servant leadership are, are many, uh, both with the faculty, with the students, uh, with the um, member companies. It takes a lot to be a student leader or a servant leader in that uh, if you look at what you're doing, you're giving autonomy to a great number of people. And those people have to carry out the, the um, business of, of I-Prime uh, without uh, so much of your interference. And so um, I think that's what I most appreciate about uh, you, Chris. And I find that um, when I look back at my own life, um, those who were servant leaders are the ones that I've admired uh, the most. So thank you. So Kurt Kopey from Dow Chemical. Thank you, Bob. I was going to wing it originally, but then when I was on the plane yesterday, I wrote down a couple items just so I wouldn't forget what to say. I mean, Chris has had a very long and distinguished career, really outstanding. I met him 30 years ago when I was a graduate student. I didn't work for Chris, but I learned a lot from him. I took his rheology course. It was an excellent course. This was back before his book was written, so he was in the midst of writing it when I was taking it. So we basically had notes, hand, sometimes handwritten. But uh, that was really helpful for me. I mean, and the work that I did, I, I did... Uh, Block upon rheology and scattering. But when I went to Dow and I got hired by Dow, I told everybody I was a rheologist. But all I ever really did in grad school is I did some frequency scans for just block polymers. I never even measured the rheology of a homopolymer in my life until, and I just never had a chance to. And, but I got his book and everything, so I really boned up as fast as I could and I, I conned them all into believe that I was a rheologist. And today, maybe I really am, I'm not sure. But anyway, you know, Chris is very, he's, he's an excellent guy. He certainly has a, has a legacy, a great legacy. And he's, uh, of anybody who knows anything about rheology, everybody knows Chris. I mean, he's made such an impact. Anybody who's ever done a rheology measurement with a parallel plate rheometer has him to thank because he was a pioneer in developing that technology. And the, the tools we have today, they trace the roots back to the great work, outstanding work he did very early in his career. And he didn't just sit on his laurels based on that great accomplishment. He's done a lot of excellent work through his career He's a great educator, not just as a professor, all professors are educators, but he educates industrial people, not just through his book, but also through the short course he gives every year. I attended that one time, excellent course. So the other thing is I also serve as a recruiter at Dow, and I've, for about 15 years or so, and I've interviewed a whole bunch of his students. They really are stand out in certain respects across, I mean, they're all great students here in Minnesota. But there's just something about the type of work that Chris does. It's very applied. He's, he's, he's very knowledgeable about what's important to industry. So he has the students working on things that are really applicable. So when I identify good students, I always try to make contacts with people at Dow to say, hey, this is a good person. She's really good. He's really good. For the case of Chris's students, it's very easy to recommend them because they can see what they did and they can understand how they would fit into Dow based on the type of work that he does. And there's one particular story I wanted to tell. I wish Frank was here to hear this one. I didn't realize he was, he was gone. But there was about five or ten years ago, uh, you know, I had interviewed a bunch of people and one of his students was selected for an on-site interview uh, in Midland. And I got involved. I actually was invited for the follow-up meeting we had after that person came on site. and. 
he was being evaluated by our analytical science group. And uh, you know, I'm just sitting there not really saying anything, just sort of listening to what they had to say. And one of the managers in the group, he's, you know, it's in front of Frank's students. And the first thing I was about to say, oh my God, another one of these Bates blockopolymer phase diagram guy. How many of these guys do we need? You know. And you know, I'm not, you know, I wish Frank was here. But uh, that's basically what I did too. So I, I said, hey, maybe one's enough. But uh, that was never an issue for any of Chris's students. I mean, it was always very easy to point to managers and say, look what they did, and they, they fit in really well. And in my case, in my group, we actually have hired three of uh, Chris's students over the years, and they've done outstanding work. So that's another thing that he's you know, an educator. He's done a great job. And the other thing I wanted to point to is this iPrime, not only iPrime, but it's Forerunner, the Center for Facial Engineering. That got started back when I was a grad student. Chris was key in getting that established. I don't know all the details back then, because I was just a grad student. I didn't know anything. But I assume that all the great contacts he had with industry helped bring in member companies to join that fledgling initial center. And I'm sure that had a lot to do with making this success. And it's continued on. So I think you can look at iPrime as really being a legacy of Chris, because he was there at the very beginning. He probably helped get, get started the way I just described. And he's carried it on, and he's also been in charge for a while. So the other thing I just want to close on, I know I've been a little long here, but there's another story I want to tell. And this is one where, you know, how did Dow get involved with iPrime, but it traces back to CIE. You know, we, I don't think we were members back when I was a grad student. I don't remember if Dow was or not. But when I did join Dow, we weren't members. I know that for sure. And then what happened was, uh, back about 20 years ago, there was a little bit of a conflict between Dow and Exxon. Some of you may remember that for the metallocene catalysis. And what happened is, is both companies were, you know, hiring or getting our... Uh, our uh, experts to fight for the, the battle. And Chris was one of the ones that we wanted to get on our side. And as I recall, the story I was told, you can tell me if this is true or not, is that someone approached from Dow approached Chris, said, hey, would you be help uh, on our side? And Chris was like, well, maybe if you join CIE, you can, uh, you can sign me up. So always thinking for the bigger picture. For the, so that was great. And you know, I'll just uh, conclude now by saying, you know, here it is 20 years later. And here we have representatives for those two companies that were fighting it out back then. And here we are both in an agreement that Chris is an outstanding professor who's made an excellent legacy. Thank you. So there will actually be a full day event on October 13th commemorating the career of Chris McCosco. And uh, corporate uh, donations or sponsorships are available for that event. So let us know uh, if you'd like to help. Uh, and with that, let me uh, introduce uh, Satish Kumar to introduce our plenary speaker. Thank Thanks, you. Bob.